So you so you lost the big gray fox contest last week. You didn't get enough, and uh, you're wanting a refresher on on fox hunting. Um, Wade's going to talk about fox hunting. So I'm gonna put 12 minutes on the timer. And go. Yeah, yeah. And go. Oh, you didn't say and go. No, you already lost three seconds. Oh, so most people who fox hunt already know how to fox hunt. I mean, it's 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 not the hardest thing you can do as it pertains. To you just go out there and shoot them, right? Pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, there's, there may be some people who, uh, enjoy our content who recently acquired some fox hunting country and they have a few questions. So I figured we'd just go ahead and dive into it a little bit. First and foremost, you need an e-caller that has fox sounds. It is highly, highly important to have some fox sounds. If you want to just increase your odds of success. Now, primarily in Texas, most of the fox hunting takes place at nighttime. You, although you can call them during the daytime, there's plenty of footage out there that exists, but it typically takes those higher density uh, places to really have good success during the daytime. I mean, it's also dependent upon the weather and all that crap, but foxes in particular, just like bobcats, uh, they really like to move more at night. Uh, so nighttime is definitely going to be your probably highest probability of success, but you can definitely do it during the daytime and it's super fun during the daytime. Shotguns are pretty popular as it pertains to fox hunting, but as you see on the table, the little guy over there, it's really more of a uh, brush fox coyote type rig. Just depends on what type of ammo I've got in the rifle. Briefly talking uh, talking on optics, uh, I ran a poll on Texas spreader hunting the, in 2022. Majority of the people, I mean, overwhelming percentage of the people who shot or fox hunt make shots on six power and less. So LPVOs are really at home in this. If you're looking for an optic, that's another topic for another day. We're talking about calling Fox. So let's get down to sounds. Uh, primarily, I almost always use electronic calls for calling Fox. Now you can call them in a mouth call. Lots of people have great success with it, but having the addition of Fox vocals, Fox sounds is a, a huge help. And you like those busy sounds as far as prey distress goes for a fox, like woodpeckers, birds, rabbits, you know, super busy, high, high squeaky sounds, you know, high pitched squeaky sounds are pretty optimal for calling fox. And then your stand length duration, if you will, usually nowhere near as long as other stuff. Like we're, we're talking about two to three minutes per sound, maybe two to three different prey distress sounds, and then roll right into your fox vocals. I don't, fox sounds which is typically like a uh, fox crying or fox fighting another fox or something along those lines most of your e-callers nowadays have some sort of fox sounds on it and then you know you just kind of roll through the night now as far as how far apart do you make sense that's typically dependent upon a couple things and it's topography terrain uh the the amount of fox that are probably present on said property is highly highly dictates how how close you can make your stands together and the wind. Wind is always a, a huge concern in how far you can go between each stand because it's higher winds. You can go much shorter distances. And it also, again, densities are, are a huge role in, in how often you're making a stand. In some places in fox country, it tends to be fairly thick. So you may be able to make stands every quarter mile and call in fox and you know, have a great time, whereas you may only have open spots every half mile or every mile. You know, it's just kind of de dependent upon the topography more than anything and density. Secondly, I have the Lucky Duck on the table and, you know, historically Lucky Duck hadn't had many fox sounds. Well, the new Lucky Duck Super Revolt, I think is what it's called. Does it say on the other side? It does say. <laughs> it does have some really good fox sounds. So now it's kind of like a, my go-to call, the Lucky Ducks. But this isn't really about the, what he calls. It's more about fox hunting. Let's talk about, briefly talk about calibers. Uh, most people don't like to blow them up, but I will tell you this. They are surprisingly tough little animals. So you want to use something that's going to get the job done, but typically like the big gray contest is a, uh, a big gray contest. You don't want to blow them completely up. Now, if you're just going for a numbers game, you have a, you have a huge overpopulation of Fox and they're killing all the quail and they will eat fawns and uh, maybe sheep, whatever those called, uh, you know, don't let them fool you. They, they, they typically tend to have a uh, severe case of little man syndrome, typically come in all bowed up, which is quite hilarious. Uh, 
So, 223, 17 Remington, you know, somewhere around there with the right projectile is more than adequate for predator uh, uh, fox hunting. And like I said, most of the time, most of the people that are putting up the most numbers are doing so more likely at nighttime in Texas. And I figure most other states probably get more during the night because, like I said, they move primarily at night. Calibers, we cover calibers, optics. Uh, what are we? How are we looking on time, Jonathan? Yeah, uh, six minutes. So, I mean, I can slow down a little bit. Is what you tell me? Yeah. <laughs> Be aware that in especially in good fox country multiple shots could be present so while i tend to really like a shorter bolt gun like 204 17 rim or 223 an ar platform is pretty ideal for fox country but as we discussed in a it was another short wasn't it another yeah 12 minute talk sometimes when you put a ar in someone's hand they tend to get a little trigger happy and they're not aiming and fox are relatively small targets so just be aware, if you're going to run an AR, I highly recommend practicing, practicing, practicing. Now, as far as hunting out of a high rack or what have you, there's several different ways you can go, but you want to be able to be uh, fast on the trigger. Uh, well, not fast on the trigger, fast on target and pull the trigger whenever you need to be. So just keep that in mind when it comes to uh, your racks and stuff. Fox Country is really the only place to where I have seen the chairs be detrimental to success because your typical setup for a fox country rack would be pretty ideal to have one light operator two shooters on you know two separate sides of a very simple rack just a shooting rail because these things have the ability to drop in and drop back out super fast now if you're sitting there rotating on a chair it could you know cost you a little bit of time which super necessary to get on target much faster because like i said with a fox you definitely want to be on target as fast as possible and choose your shot wisely because again they're super tough for what they are and they're super erratic with their behavior typically they'll stop and when they do you need to shoot them because nine times out of ten they're probably not going to stop again they are again super aggressive little animals so use that to your advantage and what i mean by that is if they're hanging up or sitting out there in the woods barking at you as they will do and it's quite hilarious when they do Use that to your advantage, whereas if you're playing a prey to stretch sound, go ahead and reach into your library real fast and get a uh, kind of aggressive little uh, fox barking or something like that. And a lot of times it'll untrack them. Now, there's one little tip that I always tell people to try if they have a fox hung up that's probably been caught before. If it's sitting out there just out of sight barking at you, which again will happen, your best representation of what he's doing to you, which is a fox mark, which is a goofy sound in his hell, I know. Try to do that with your own voice back to him. I've seen this work multiple times while fox hunting, and it's uh, it's actually quite hilarious, but it does work. Because, again, they got like they got a serious case of little man syndrome. Now, where should we go to next? I would I would probably recommend... Way, you know, if you're one of those people, and it exists in the predator hunting community quite quite often, that don't practice much. I would highly recommend if you're going to go to fox country, practice a lot. You need to practice getting on target fast, whatever whatever setup you hunt out of. Get on target fast to where you can choose your shots m- much better. Because they are small targets. We're talking like if you shoot a 10-pound gray fox, it's pretty big. With the average that you're probably going to shoot is probably six to eight pounds, is what I would what I would assume. We're talking about a tiny target. Now, most of the time you're going to be shooting up close, so that's why I highly recommend that you utilize today's optics LPVOs, one to six is one to eight. They're they're typically going to have some sort of uh, really neat system with a uh, uh, aiming dot for the center. Uh, it just depends on which one you choose. One to six, one to eight is going to be more than adequate for Fox Country. And if you can practice enough, I would highly recommend an AR because your follow-up shots, like especially in Fox Country, you're you're not always going to shoot perfect. These are again tiny targets moving very erratically. That fast follow-up is pretty handy, but just don't get carried away and start just start pulling the trigger and not aiming. I don't think, is there anything I probably should talk about that you can think of? I mean, well, you, you talked about hunting with an electronic collar, which we could hardly call that hunting. What about uh, what about mouth calls? 
Uh, one of the first times we went to Fox Country, uh, uh, Joey Hoffman took me, and he was mouth calling, and he, we were having great success. Uh, typically use like a woodpecker, clo- closed read mouth call, like woodpecker to high pitch cocktail or jackrabbit. I mean, I'm a fan. I'm I'm a fan of this uh, tactic for everything, and especially Fox. As you make your stands, you keep up with what sounds are working, whether it be a certain pitch or tone or so on and so forth. And, they, and like I said, they like they really like higher pitch sounds. It seems so. If you're using a, a mouth call utilize that higher pitch sound and as you go along making these stands you keep track in your head or write it down even what sounds are producing results and utilize them until they stop working some nights it'll be just like a woodpecker sound some nights the only thing you can call them in on is uh fox distress sounds so i mean i've heard guys some of the mfk guys sterling i think it's sterling who did the really good gray fox distress with the diaphragm call you could do it with mouth calls uh gray fox distress but it's much easier to press a button for those sounds. Just my opinion. Yeah. Especially so you're going to be doing that a lot. <laughs> yes. I mean, because typically in Fox country, it's going to, it's either going to be dead and you're just going to go home or it's going to be super busy. A lot of things going on. So especially if you're hunting by yourself, which I hope you have one of the TPH shares at that point, uh, mouth calling may be a little bit, a little bit much. Cause I mean, you need on Fox country. I definitely recommend staying on the gun and alert at all times. And, you know, some predator hunters get kind of lazy and they get laid back. And if you're sitting there, you're already kind of a lazy laid back hunter and you're sitting there mouth calling, you're probably going to miss out on a bunch of opportunities. Yeah. So maybe stick to the e-call more in Fox Country. I know that's every once in a while to use mouth call in Fox Country. But majority of the time, I'm going straight e-call. Because, I mean, again, the Fox sounds are just highly important. Well, it seems like uh, we wrapped that one up pretty good. Um, we got Nailed 15 it. seconds left, so I'm going to go ahead and, <laughs> you know, if you, what are your thoughts on these 12 minute talks so far? Um, you liking them, hating them, want to change something about them? Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, post, just talk shit about Wade in the comments. That's my favorite. Other or the that, guy that y'all never seen. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we are officially out of time. Uh, yeah, have a great day. Good luck next time on the contest. I, th- I, th- I think you'll get it this time.